This is Powder River country. It's wild country, it's strong. Powder River rocks are granite, and the pine trees are hard and sweet to smell. Sleep under them, and you feel eight feet tall in the morning. Long about 1875, they found gold here. And Johnny Slater wrote to me and told me to come out. I did. But first, I hung up my guns. In my family, the men generally wore a marshal's badge. It was a pride we had. But I'd had enough of killing. And I wanted to sit back and be like other folks. But one summer evening, things began to happen. Hey, now. Camp? I guess. We go around? Maybe. Nag of mine's blown, so is yours. Camp out here means fresh horses. Hey, that sorrel's pretty. Can I have that sorrel? Shut up. We was thinking of trading horses with you. Better think again. I seen you someplace before, Mr. Uh... The name is Bull. Bull? <laughs> what kind of a handle is that? Yeah, I seen you in Cheyenne once. Sure, you're Chino Bull. Some call me Chino. Yeah, I heard of you. Heard you got a hard hand with a gun. Quite a reputation. Started with meatheads like you thinking my name was funny. You don't look like no hard rock to me. You look easy. Slow, take it slow. I heard you put your guns up. You got a belly full of killing and put your guns up. I notice you ain't wearing anything right now, so how about being polite? I never learned. Well, why don't I teach you? Hold it right where you are. I wouldn't even twitch if I was you. Lend me one of those. You said you was all through with that. I don't like this meathead. Come on. I'll only cripple you. Let's go. Anytime you're ready, meathead. I wouldn't have a chance. Mr. Bull? Get him out of here. Make tracks, both of you. I'll remember you. You too, Johnny. Yeah. Be seeing you sometime, somewhere. Let me know. That one that knew me was Loney Logan. Mean as cat's milk. Him and his brother both. I blew off again. Yeah, but this time nobody died. You're getting better. What do them jokers want? Our horses. Getting ready to go to town when he showed up. Wanted to trade. Fixing to get nasty about it. Good thing he came back from the diggings. Oh. I had a reason. Looky here. Nuggets. That new streak of gravel we hit yesterday. Say, that's the biggest I've ever seen. Well, keep it. Just don't go flashing it around town. I like it kind of private out here. Yeah. Rest of this goes in the bank. Keep an eye peel while I'm away. Those Jaspers might come back. Chino, I made up a little list of things here. Already got a list of everything we need. Yeah, I know, but this is kind of special. Candy. And peaches. Where am I going to get peaches? Well, the fellow at the store said the next time I come in, he'd have something new. Peaches in a can. Peaches in a can? Yeah. How'd they get there? Well, how do I know? 
You can ask, can't you? What's this? Oh, cigarettes. Tailor made. They're smoking them back east. Real fancy. <laughs> well, nobody'd see me way out here. All right, dude. When I buy all this junk, I'm going to tell them it's for you. <laughs> sure. You don't want to take your gun belt with you. No, every time I wear a gun, all the hammer-headed hard rocks from miles around come along and want to choose me. Better off without it. And don't get mad at nobody. Same to you. Take care of the bank. I have a little list here. Yeah, find yourself a seat. This will take a while. Oh, uh, might as well fill this out while you're at it. You got what it says there? Peaches in a can? Yeah. Latest thing out. Drummer says pretty soon they'll be putting everything up in cans. Thanks. You're kind of a country boy, huh? Yeah. What's your name, country boy? Bull. Bull? Bull. Chino Bull. What's yours? Uh, Logan. I'm Harvey Logan. The old blackjack at the Bella Union. I, um, I talk too much. You got a brother named Loney? Yeah. I don't like him either. What's up? Sam Harris, crazy drunk. Marshal Simpson and I went down there to take him in. He killed the marshal. Either one of you boys want to volunteer to go and get Harris? Not me. Try this, Bravo. It's none of my business. Any of my business, I go and drag him out by the heels. I guess that sort of makes it your business. Yeah, guess it does. Give me the word, Mayor. By virtue of the power vested in me as mayor of this community, I hereby appoint you temporary marshal. And I hope you know what you're doing. that shooting up the town. If you are, get outside and get yourself plugged. Well, what are you looking at? Excuse me, ma'am. I never saw a lady smoke before.
you dead? No, I just hit him with a bottle. You got more nerve than I've seen lately. I'd admire to shake your hand, Mr. This is Chino Bull, Mayor. <laughs> then I'd sure like to shake your hand. Thanks. Marshal's dead if you're looking for a job. No, thanks. I'm all through marshaling. Got a belly full of gunplay. Sure looks like it, all right. Guess I got a little upset. Job's open if you want it. Pays 300 a month. From what I hear, it's worth it in this town. I've got other business. Thanks. All right, get him out of here. Marshal's job. Still open? What changed your mind? Somebody killed my partner. I'm sorry to hear that. Where would I go looking for Lonely Logan? It's hard to say. Lonely's not like his brother. Harvey sticks close to town. He's a dealer at the Bella Union. Lonely is more like a coyote. Here one day and someplace else the next. But he always comes back to Powder River. I'll wait for him. Might take some time. I've got the time. I'll wait. Nobody ever proved anything against Lonely. Nobody will have to. I see. Well, the town's going to be real pleased about this. I want to be fair, though, and warn you. Kill him legal or just kill him? Harvey won't stand for it. He and Lonely are pretty close. You just swear me in. A pleasure. Raise your right hand. By virtue of the power vested in me. Your husband likes it. A little competition never hurt anybody, Frenchy. Town's getting bigger all the time. Yep. But when one of my dealers opened his own place, I've got to wonder where he got the money. Well, that's between you and Harvey. It sure is. Over, Marshal? Yep. A lot of work around here. You won't get much sleep. I don't need much. Well, I heard. What changed your mind? Maybe I wanted to live closer to the Cam Peaches. <laughs> well, drink to my place, Marshal. First time I ever went into business. It's your bottle from now on. May it never run dry. Thank you. Looks like you're spending quite a lot of money. Yeah. You saved it all just working at the Bella Union. Yeah, I saved it. Still working there, though. Gonna work till the end of the week. Go on, drink up. Somebody said something about the Logan boys. Would that be you and your brother Loney? Yeah. 
Who said what about the Logan boys? Why does he do your brother? In business with you? Baloney travels. He don't like towns. And you don't see much of him? He comes by. Well, that's not so bad. Tell me when he does. I'd like to meet him. Why? I'd like to meet him. Part of my job. I'll let you know. Thanks. Howdy, Marshal. Frenchie, she wants to see you. Who's Frenchie? Belly Union. She said you'd buy me a drink if I fetched you. Bet she didn't. Bet she already gave you one. You're trying to get paid twice. Marshal, good morning. Good morning. Oh, now wait. I know you. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> the new corset. I was trying on my new corset yesterday. Well, Marshal, you already know a lot about me. And now I've got to catch up with you. Here. Help yourself. From now on, this battle is yours. Everybody is generous this morning. A little too early. Too early in the day or too early in our friendship? Just too early. Hmm. It's nice to see a handsome face over that badge. So last marshal. And that nose. Well, I'm glad you think I look better. You do. Stay that way. It's kind of difficult in a town like this. You know, one day a marshal, tomorrow a corpse. Of course, a man can stay alive longer if he knows the right people. And the right people wouldn't be Harvey Logan, or his brother. Oh, that brother is a cheap crook. But Harvey, Harvey is the best dealer in the business. And he leaves me and opens his own place. You better watch out. His table won't be honest. Then they won't last long. And that goes for all the tables in town. Mine too. You wouldn't put me in jail. Real fast. I had an arrangement with the last marshal. Oh, you know the usual thing. A few dollars here and there for little favors and, and his private bottle. You lay it right in the line, don't you? I'm a businesswoman, marshal. How much do you know about the town? I'm learning. Learning anything about Mitch Harden? Nope. The Logan brothers are dangerous, but Mitch... Faster the gun, huh? The best. And he's my... Protector. Uh -huh. well, I guess that's nice for you. Real nice. Hey, Bill, come on. That's awesome. Hey, you. I'm lifting her eye. Have the dice. Here we go again, dice. Five and a two. I'm letting it ride. That's nine in a row. Let her ride. This time a six and a five. A six and a five. Eleven. The winner. He calls it. Let me have the dice. Here you are, sir. Uh, Mademoiselle herself. Maybe a lady can cool you off. Be more passive than I own the joint. On the line, boys. Double your bet. The lucky man is still rolling. Hold it. This is for fun. <laughs> Box cars again. What goes on here? Just a minute. Who's going to pay for that beer? Those dice can pay for anything. Come on. Where to? Calabozo. You're not going to put me in jail. No? Not if you want to stay alive. You're forgetting about Mitch Harden, Marshal. Yeah, I know. You're his girl, and he doesn't like to see you pushed around. That's right. 
Do you have any complaint, mister? I'm not afraid of Harden. Well, I'll tell him you said so. As for you, pick up your hoop and roll it out of here. Mitch Harden or no Mitch Harden, you're running a crooked table. You're going with me. Ha ha. <laughs> Mitch! Mitch, darling! Over here! Shaking over here! Hello, Mitch. Long time no see. Point out the marshal. It was all a misunderstanding, Mitch. Believe me, we'll get it all straightened out. I said point out the marshal. There's a tall fellow at the crap table. Give the man a beer. Name's Bull. You. You with a the badge. They tell me your name is Bull. Bull what? You call me mister. I'm Mitch Harden. I don't call anybody mister. I understand you're a fancy Dan with a gun. And I've got one. I'm not wearing any now. Get one. Get it fast. Oh, here. Here you are, Marshal. Take mine. Who are you betting on, Harvey? Either way. It's all right with me. Come on, come on, let's go. I'd leave town if I were you. If this happens often, I'd take that chip off my shoulder. It happens. Let's have a drink, Mr. Bull. My pleasure, Mr. Hyman. Want your prayers answered, Harvey? Better go to church more often. See you in Sunday school, Marshal. Come on, boys, let's gamble. Good. It's a pretty fancy concho belt. Zuni Indian? Yeah. Belonged to a friend of mine, a gunfighter. Gave it to me just before he died. My friend had an idea the conchos would protect his belly. Thank you, Mitch. My friend was wrong. Who shot him? I did. What about Frenchie? Quite a gal. I rode 40 miles to see her. Well, the complaining witness just left town. I guess I can let her out. One condition. Condition? You have to protect me. Send me a walk. Get out of the calabozo and let Miss Dumont out. Cell 8. Cell 8? Yes. Then lock yourself in for the night. Put myself in. Yes, sir. You're all right, Marshal. We'll get along. We'll have to. I'm supposed to keep the peace. Even if it means gunplay, huh? Even so. I hear you're pretty good. I'm pretty good myself. Maybe better. Maybe. Looks fast. Is fast. Seen all kinds. Belly guns, arm guns, singles, two-hand crossover. Only heard about knee guns. Never saw one before. Looks fast. Is fast. Fastest I was ever up against was a swivel. Swivel, huh? Yeah, a guy had his gun on a swivel. Just push a handle down and let fly. Real fast. Fast as this. Faster. Hmm. Lucky for me, he couldn't aim we're speaking about. I can aim. Same here. Doesn't this make you nervous? If you cock it, I'll get nervous. You're all right, Marshal. You're all right. We better be friends. Or else you better start wearing a gun. Hanging on a hook in the office. It's gonna stay there. What happens when there's trouble? Oh, I can always get a gun somewhere. Ha, 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 ha.
Are you the actors I sent from Chicago? The great balls? At your service, ma'am. He grabs money almost as hard as you do, Frenchy. I hope you're good. We buried the last actor we had here. Why? Because he was dead. Come on. There you are, miss. Could you tell me where Dr. Harden lives? Dr. Harden? Dr. Mitchell Harden. Marshal? Yeah. This young lady looking for Mitch Harden. Stays right here in the hotel. These your things? Why, yes. I'll take them for you. Mac! Hey, Mac! Nobody here. Maybe we can find a nice room for you. 207. Best room in the house. You go on up and I'll register for you. Right at the top of the stairs. Thank you. The name's Deborah Allen. <laughs> Where from? New Haven, Connecticut. And would you please find out the number of Dr. Harden's room? Yes, ma'am. Here, so I put her in 207, all right? Oh, sure thing. What room is Mitch Harden in? Now, why would she want to know that? You said she did. Well, in that case, it's uh, 210. Just put them there. All right. Thank you. I'd keep this closed at night if I were you. It gets a little noisy across the street there. What does one do about a bath? One yells downstairs for a wash tub. I'll yell for you. You're very kind. Thank you, Marshal. Uh, you're welcome. That room number you wanted is 210. If you should happen to see Dr. Harden, don't tell him I'm here. Want to surprise him, huh? You will. Hey! Who's that for? The actor. Let him wait. What are you doing there? Debbie. Hello, Mitch. I've come to take you home. Debbie, it's been a year. More. How did you find me? I followed your reputation. I bet it was easy at that. All right? You know where I am and what I am. That's enough. Stagecoach goes in both directions. You want me to leave? That's a message I'm trying to get across. Go home. No, not without you. You're going back with me. Look at me, Debbie. Who am I? Dr. Mitchell Harden. The man I'm going to marry. No, I'm not a doctor anymore. Not since I had the bad taste of blackout after carefully opening up a patient. 
No, I'm not going to marry you. Not since I found out why I blacked out. Debbie, do you know what a brain tumor is? I've got a railroad train in my head, roaring bigger and louder every day. But you're a doctor. You've saved other men's lives. There are men who can save you. Same old Debbie. Still believes in Santa Claus. Well, I'll be in a few months as a nice exhibit for some jerkwater medical college. I have no intention of becoming a married corpse. Get that and keep it. It's yours as a parting gift. I won't go back without you, Mitch. Yes, you will. I've learned how to be unpleasant. It's a rare feeling not caring whether people like you or not. I'm good at it. You haven't got the stomach to take what I could dish out if you hung around. Ask about me. Anybody in town? Ask her, for instance. She knows a lot about me. More than you. How about it, Frenchie? Have you noticed any sweetness in my character lately? A love of pity? Where's that buttery little poopy? <laughs> Good old Frenchie. No false sentiments, no claptrap about marriage, straight to the point. That's what I like about you. Who are you, Debbie? The lady wants to know. What do you mean? No sentiment, no marriage. Do you think I'm one of the boys or something? Do you think I have been holding hands with you all this time without ever wondering if I did to the preacher? Stop it, Frenchie, stop. Mitch! Oh, Mitch, my darling. When does the next stage leave? Tomorrow morning. I want a ticket. You discussed here, didn't you? How is it that you... Excuse me. None of my business, I'm sure. The name's Deborah Allen. Yes, ma'am. I like to sit facing front. That you will, ma'am. Stage leaves at six o'clock sharp. Thank you. Hotel's that way, Miss Allen. You got a reason to go there, that is. If not, then maybe... Maybe what? Well, I don't get a chance to talk to many females. Kind of left-footed about it. Pa always said to talk to any woman who'd listen to me. That way I'd get over it. So far, I haven't. I'm uh, driving out to Lost Creek Mine. The country's very pretty. A lot prettier than a wallpaper in that hotel room. We could talk. And that way I'd get a chance to practice a little. I don't feel much like talking. Well, then I could just look at you. Pa said that was good practice, too. <laughs> Tell me the name of those flowers. They look like azaleas. Azaleas. I never knew that before. Mind if we pick some? make me homesick. Who are they for? A friend of mine. Is she pretty? It's a he. A fella I grew up with. Sure did like these flowers. Azaleas. Made him homesick, too. Kind of funny, I guess, since neither of us had a home. We always took our hats off wherever we happened to be. How did he die? He was shot. Bushwhacked, we call it. He didn't have a chance. Sure liked his aliens. Used to wait for him every year. Never knew the name. Now he knows, maybe.
It's beautiful. Lots of it. You ought to stay around a few days and see the country. I suppose you wonder why I'm leaving so soon. I don't ask questions, Miss Allen. If you want me to know something, I figure you'll tell me. Why are you leaving? Mitch wants me to. It figures. He's pretty sick. How did you know? Kind of caved in once. I happened to be there. We were going to be married. He became ill and then he disappeared. I followed him here to take him home. But he's very sick and he wants me to leave. So I'm leaving. Sounds logical. Now what's the real reason? Frenchie? It's getting late. Yep. Kind of chilly, too. Thanks for coming with me. I wish you'd change your mind about leaving tomorrow. Don't ask me, please. Goodbye, and thanks. $300,000 in gold bars and the mine safe scares me. I've got to ship it out. This is Mr. Purdy of the Homestead Mine, you know. He's planning to make a gold shipment. I'll have the bullion here early Monday morning. Better have two shotgun riders. I'll send Chino along. Why don't you say the boys are trouble sticking up the coach? Just put the gold out in front and tell them to come and get it. Two messengers in one stage is a dead giveaway. Afraid to risk your neck? Maybe. Gold's easy to find. Necks are scarcer. I know one that ought to be stretched. Chino, Lonely Logan's come back. Lonely? Mr. Purdy said he got a glimpse of him on the way down from the mine. He'll make trouble if he gets wind of this gold shipment. Lowry, when are we going to have some real law around here? This town won't grow until businessmen know their investments will be protected. Simmer down. You'll be protected. Where's Loney now? Hard to say. Always camps outside of town. Chino, it'll be suicide to go straight to him. Then I'll make him come to me. Had a case like this back in Cheyenne. We used a decoy. Stage went out loaded with deputies. The real thing went out two or three hours later and the road was clear. I'll be up to your mine tomorrow morning. Have some boxes ready. Fill them with uh, sand or gravel, but make it look real. Tomorrow? Why, that's Sunday. That's why. Stage never leaves on Sunday. This'll look like a special job. You can't get deputies on a Sunday. Their wives will holler blue blazes. Not Pike Kendrick's wife. They hate the Logans. How do you figure in getting word to Loney Logan? You haven't much time. No, but I've got an idea Harvey works pretty fast. Oh, one more thing. No passengers tomorrow. Better cancel Miss Allen. How goes the squeezes? You know, uh, Silver Dollar buys one drink over at Frenchie's. Pretty near two over at Harvey's place. Tell you something. I'd pay a dollar to anybody to forget he saw me talking to Mr. Purdy in a stage office. You know how folks run on. <laughs> Mr. Purdy, uh, homestead mine, big gold shipment. No, I didn't see anything. That's good. So when you go over to Harvey's, don't say a word about a big gold shipment tomorrow morning. Yeah. Not even if he gives you another dollar. Oh. <laughs> He'd pay that, Harvey, just to have something to gossip about. Oh, I wouldn't say a thing. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. So you just forget the whole thing and go on over there and wet your whistle. Oh, thanks, Marshal. <laughs> When I imported. Supposed to be here entertaining my customers. So have a drink. Brandy settles everything. How do you feel? Alive. That's good. You feel alive? No. 
to feel nothing at all. Mitch. Mitch, what am I going to do with you? I don't want you to do anything. You just leave me alone, you'll be better off. Where is that actor? He's late. I sent the boys all over town looking for him. Brandy doesn't settle anything. It just makes you mean. Mean as a vinegar room. Brandy and young ladies from Connecticut. Shut up. <laughs> you don't want to hurt her, so you hurt me. Shut up. I know something. What would you know? Just wait a dollar. All right. There's going to be a big gold shipment tomorrow from the Homestead Mines. So? The marshal is going to ride shotgun ahead. So? Bobby Logan found out. I heard he sent word to Loney. I didn't tell him. So the marshal get his head shot off. That's what he's paid for anyway. Mm, he's a nice fella. Not that nice. Anyway, it's time for a change. My dollar. Go and tell the bartender to give you a drink. Thank you. Your new friend, the marshal. I don't like him, and I never will. Why? Because he's always laughing at you? At me? At me? Oh, you should take the place of my actor. You're funnier. What was your friend doing all day riding in his buckboard? And who was with him smiling and having such a good time? So poor sweet little lady from the East. <laughs> when she's with you, she cries. But when she's with him, oh. The marshal's winning. That's what I was just now telling Mr. Harden. Ah, good evening, Mr. Mont. Good evening. I'll bet. Call and raise. Good evening. Bye, Paul. So you don't strain your eyes. Very dark hands. Harvey Logan kidnapped your actor. What do you mean? Came and got him. My actor is entertaining Harvey Logan. Now what are you going to do about it? I'll go talk to him. Let's talk more shooting. Take a gun this time. <laughs> no thanks, these things are dangerous. <laughs> Holy for me. Yes, sir. Where are you headed, Mr. Bull? Gonna have a little talk with Harvey Logan. Mind if I come along? There's nothing I like better than a pleasant conversation. It's good. How much you paying this guy? Nothing. Too much. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> on this one. That one is very easy. <laughs> That's a little harder. <laughs> that one is very hard. <laughs> Here's the one to worry about. <laughs> Supposed to go in the other eye. <laughs> the good one. <laughs> yeah, I'll hurt. I thank you. He belongs across the street. You'd rather work for me. Ask him. You seem to be in the wrong place, mister. Sir, I'm in the wrong hemisphere. Come on down, we're going across the street. Get back here. You ain't much, but you're all we got. Back up, you're in the wrong pew. I've been waiting for you. Cylinder won't turn, so it can't fire. Remember that. Oh! Anybody else? Huh? <laughs> Anybody at all? No, no, miss. There's likely to be a lot more shooting. Mitch Harden's taking on the whole Logan outfit. Come on, Mitch. Put your gun up, will you? 
Now well, why? They asked for it, didn't they? <laughs> Nobody else? Mitch. I've been upstairs. Go worry about your customers. They tell me if you drink enough of that stuff, the lady in the picture begins moving. Yeah, well, tonight's my night to find out. Thanks for backing my play across the street. There's nothing. It's too bad I didn't kill Wally. I don't see how you've managed to stay alive so long. For one thing, I don't go about unarmed. Another thing, I don't care. But most of all, I mind my own business. Don't go on a prod with me. You don't have any reason to. Where were you this afternoon? You and your buckboard. Oh, so that's it. That's it. First, you tell her to leave town. Then you're ready to cool anybody that speaks to her. We were talking about you. You do a lot of talking, don't you? She loves you, Mitch. Why, I don't know. But that's the way it is. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Not a thing. And as for you, Mr. Bull, you stay out of my life. Maybe I think it's worth saving. I don't happen to agree with you. Oh. There's only one thing to do with a man like me. This. Mitch! What did you do to him? I hit him. You didn't have to do that. He was looking for trouble. This way he won't find it. Let him sleep it off. told me you were in here. He said no passengers this trip. What'd you say? I said yes. We're on a special job. Might be trouble. I don't mind trouble. That's what I'm looking for. You hung one on me last night. <laughs> when I get as slopped up as you were, you can get even. I can't wait. I'm climbing you right now. All right. But why? Not because I hit you. Lowry told me you fixed it so Debbie stay in town. He thought it was funny. I'm not laughing. You know something, Mitch? You've been at this fish-eyed killer act so long, you're beginning to believe it. Don't bother with that smoke. I don't think you'll finish it. I think I will. I'm not wearing a six-gun. And you'd look pretty silly trying to draw that one sitting down. Especially with this right in your kisser. Let's try it and see. All right, tell you what we do. Draw your gun. But don't cock it. I get nervous if you cock it. Now what? Now we count up to five and then fire. You do the counting. It's plain murder. What you wanted, wasn't it? Count. One, two, three, four, five. Isn't loaded. No. You knew it wasn't loaded. Yeah. I also knew you weren't out to shoot me. You wanted me to shoot you. No, thanks. If you want to be dead that bad, do it yourself. Here, have a smoke.
Hi, Pike. You look ready for Bear. Ready for Logan. All right, bring those boxes out. Get those dummies aboard. Put this one inside and the other one on top. Don't give them the real thing, boys. Move, boys. Let's go. <laughs> You boys know it's Sunday? Yeah, we're on our way to church now. Get up! Morning, boys. Give me a hand on that. Forward, Joey! You heard him. Shove up. Just be sure you take it nice and easy, like you always do. Stay with him, Will. Keep me covered. I'm going to cut the tow line. Take a look at Pike.
it's my head, just my head. Those rapids are chewing us to pieces. We gotta get a line to shore fast. Give me one end of that. Well, we'll still get the gold. All we gotta do is a little fishing when that stage cracks up on the rapids. You all right? Go ahead. I'll throw it to you. They're deserting ship already. Gone to Whitewater. He won't be back until day after tomorrow. Never mind. He's dead. Died on the way in. Hear that? It's Pike. Yes. Pike's dead. Yeah. Died on the way in. Is that for Mr. Harden? Yes, ma'am. He mustn't drink. You know that. Yes, ma'am. I know that, but I've got better sense than to tell him. Then suppose you let me tell him. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Uh, come in. I set it over there. I get out of the stable and tell him to get my horse ready. As soon as I feel better, I'm leaving town. If I won't go, you will. Is that it? You're giving me a bad time. Why don't you leave me alone? All I want to do is die in peace, and I can't get any cooperation. You're a good doctor, Mitch. All you need is faith. <laughs> faith in a wedding ring, huh? Forget about me. I don't matter. I didn't stay because of myself. I stayed because of you. I want to help you believe in yourself again. You sound just like the marshal. He's your friend too, Mitch. Is he, Debbie? Is he really a friend of mine? I'll tell you something. You know why Mr. Bull took the marshal's job? Somebody shot his pal, his sidekick, a lad named Johnny Slater. I know about him. He liked azaleas. I wouldn't know. All I know is who shot him and stole his gold. It was in some mottled deer hide pokes. Ever see anything like that before, Debbie? That's right. It was me. It was me that killed Johnny Slater. Now, why don't you go and tell the marshal, huh? He'd kill you if I told him. Hmm. Yeah. I would have told him myself once, but we got to be friends. He was my friend. I hate losing friends. Why did you kill Johnny? No, it was an accident. I rode up to the camp and he saw me coming. I guess he thought I was somebody else. He drew him in, I shot him, and that was it. But you robbed him. Yes, I robbed him. After he died, I robbed him. I didn't think he'd care. Well, that's it, Miss Allen. What are you going to do, Miss Allen? I'll go tell the livery stable to get your horse ready. So you can leave. You can't put a man in jail for what his brother did, and you know it. Who says I can't? Any of you say I can't? Look, I know my rights. 
We'll write a letter to the president. While we're waiting for an answer, we'll see how the jail looks with you inside it. I got an idea to look fine. Or maybe you'd rather wait for Kendrick's friends to make up their minds what kind of a knot to put in a rope. I'll go with you. Get over. If any of you go out looking for Loney, you better take some shovels. Right now he's digging graves. Tell him the ground's a lot softer here in town. Is he working with Loney? If he has, Loney will try and get him out of jail. Why wait? Loney's the one I'm after. We're not so choosy. Yeah, that's right. Let's, let's get started, it, boys. All right, if it's excitement you want, volunteers, deputies. When Loney finds out Harvey's in jail, there'll be enough excitement to go around. That I promise you. Mayor, swear three or four of these men in. Take charge of this meathead. You, you and you. Better get under cover, miss. There's trouble coming on. Mr. Harden wants his horse. He's leaving right away. Yes, ma'am. I'll saddle up for him. Thank you. Hey, Jack. Mitch is leaving, huh? So am I. As soon as I get the ferry running. The man at the stage office said it would be Wednesday. I'll go talk to Mitch. Maybe he'll change his mind. No. It's too late for him to change his mind. I want him to leave. Get back! I'll get the doctor. Doctor's out of town. Mitch. Get Mitch. He's a doctor. Find Mitch Harden. Give me a hand, boys. Easy now. Bullet is less than an inch from my heart. This needs a good doctor. That's you from what you told me. No, there's nothing I can do. You'd let her die? I have no instruments, no chloroform, nothing. Yes, you have. We broke into Doc Palmer's office and got everything you need. It's all there. Mitch, if you know what to do, you've got to do it. Get like that one you're watching me kill her. Mitch! Please. Get me a hand mirror. I need something to sterilize with. Whiskey. Get me about six bottles of whiskey. Enough, Chino. You want to leave? I've seen blood before. If you want to help, stay. If you're going to stand there hoping the knife slips, get out. I'll stay. Lower. Lower. a bullet. Well, I still did. He waited until he was sure you were all right. Am I all right? Yes. I did a good job, Debbie. As good as anything I've ever done. And I'm going back. Maybe they can do something for me. I want to live, Debbie. It's important to me now. 
Maybe we could go back together, after all. You don't need me now. You don't need anyone. I'm staying here. Gino. I tell you to wait. Mitch. Morning, Mitch. Morning. Any sign of Loney? Not yet, Doctor. How's Debbie? Out of the woods. I left some instructions for Doc Palmer with the hotel clerk. Tried to get him to pay some attention to them. Pulling out, huh? Yes. Time for a cup of coffee? Thank you. Frenchie's packing a bag. He's waiting for Harvey up the street. Good. Hey, Loney! You want Harvey? Come and get him! Looks like you're staying after all. No, I'll get another horse. You'll take mine. No thanks, I... No arguments. <laughs> what do you got in this, lead? No, books, instruments. You better let me carry it. Oh, I'm not exactly puny. Frenchie's going with you, huh? Yes. Good thing, I guess. With me not here to protect you, Frenchie'd be pretty hard to handle. <laughs> yeah, too much for me. Ah, there she is. Bluebell, three gated. You'll like her. Nice horse. Nice saddle, too. Hey, looks like one of those stray bullets put a hole in it. Gold. Placer gold. his gun. I don't know why, but he threw it out on me. Instinct. I killed him. Wait here. You going for your gun? Chino, wait. It's different now with me. I'm sorry about your boy Johnny, but not enough to let you gun me. I want to live, Chino. Enough to kill you if you get in my way. You'll get your chance. Chino! You're not fast enough!
Good luck, friend. Let's go. <laughs> Told you. You're not fast enough. Sure, this is all right. You didn't spend half enough time in bed. Mitch always said that the time to get up is when you're ready to. Uh oh. Here we are, the last details. Now I go and Padre River forgets me in two days. Why go? It's your town again. You didn't have to sell a Bella Union. My town? With another bank opening next week? No, ship. When the town begins to grow and the boys begin to save their money, that's no place for me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, one more thing. It's, it's foolish because I'm, I'm not sentimental. I'm a businesswoman, but next time you go to bring flowers to Mitch, would you perhaps put them there for you? Please. Goodbye. All right, take them out. <laughs> 